So again, beautiful, wonderful reference, Morgan Freeman, really cool actor, very distinct face. So seeing it again, see, I'm using 18 by 24 today, really, really larger size. So we're going to just go crazy. So I'm just seeing how much space this whole, his head takes inside this format. Uh, I just, I like to see some neck, obviously part of the torso. So this is going to be probably the bottom of the chin and the top of the head. And that's how we determine pretty much how much space this head is going to take. There is a shape to it. So it is a bit, of, and also there is a bit of a tilt, if you notice. So it's not straight here. There's a slight, it's ever so slight, slight tilt, like the head is slightly tilted. So that's kind of interesting and it's narrow when you look at it like I usually measure you know the width here around the cheekbones and the ears and I put it so it's above the eyebrows somewhere there so it's kind of a narrower shape and very very quickly hopefully you can see do you want me to press a little bit more if you're not seeing much and here definitely very important this deltoid muscle so it starts somewhere under the ear i'm just very roughly indicating where his shoulders are gonna be and one is a little bit up so see there is a bit of a movement he's like ta -da, like this like his torso is turned a little bit so and this one is going down <clears throat> all right so here we go very very quickly so now let's measure and do our three sections like we always do again the top of the eyebrows the bottom of the nose and the bottom of the chin so top of eyebrows somewhere here bottom of the nose it's pretty much it looks very equal between top of eyebrows nose versus chin so these spaces here seem pretty much the same and then i need to leave some room for the hair there's lots of hair going on so here we go and very very quickly there's this hair very roughly i'm just really drawing very rough right now so i'm gonna crop it so obviously there will be hair coming out of this paper because maybe i didn't configure it right but it's okay it's perfectly fine to crop things so here is gonna be the eyebrows there is a distance between the eyebrows, so you have to make sure that this is all correct. So it's quite a distance, they're not very close, he has like a wide set eyes. Okay, so we want to keep that tilt, so everything is going to follow that tilt perpendicularly. There is a big distance between his eyebrows and the eyes, so we are paying attention to where the corners of the eye is, of the eyes. So one is gonna be here. Okay, the other one is gonna be somewhere here. And then the nose. So I think the eyes are somewhere here. And if you guys, if you already drew it, just, yeah, work with your either masking fluid or just follow, you know, the the way I do it and the whole thought process. But I always start big, the big shapes first, obviously. Let me make sure nobody is in the waiting room. Nope. Okay. So here we go. And the so the no, nose is quite wide, if you notice. So when we draw a vertical, it's just going to hit the inside of his iris almost like so if the eye, iris of his eye is somewhere here, yeah, the nose is going to be really wide. So pay attention to this. The distance between the eyes are quite big too. So the distance between this nostril and then there is a bit of a tilt again here. Just constantly measuring all the distances. 
between this and this and that and the whole shape of the nose how much space does it take really like quite a lot like big nose nostril here and then his mouth there is a okay so we always look at this line here of the mouth that divides both lips so look at the direction which way does it go and look at the distance from this line to the nose from the line to the chin again and it looks uh, close enough so here i'm gonna add the upper lip and then the bottom lip it's gonna be right here and he has some mustache here's now the eyes are very interesting we'll get to those but let me just first draw this quickly okay there is this line okay and it's a it's an interesting beard so and there is a shape to it so just don't see it also beards how we paint beard don't see it as separate hairs there are some hairs and details, but just see it all as a shape. So that's a that's a good reference to learn how to paint facial hair too. So it goes out. And my head like became bigger and bigger. <laughs> just I really made it humongous. It's okay now. No, it's all right. Even if we crop it, that's perfectly okay. So just pay attention, paying attention now to these eyes. Uh, again, the distance, the, all these, the corners, very, very important. And he has that look, like you see half, like really a little bit, not quite the whole iris, goes down. Very interesting shape of the eyes. And it goes down like that. And of course, all their face is very interesting because they have a lot more character. We see some already lines on the face and there's always stuff that you can work with. So definitely great for painting. So I'll be always pay attention to the jaw, jawline, jawline, definitely. And here we go. I'm just checking to see if anybody's waiting. I think there's more people that are supposed to show up. So always pay attention to the hairline. So it's kind of narrow. So I need to probably bring this in a little bit and high enough, but it's a bit narrow on the side. And the hair goes out. I'm gonna extend it even more. So lots of lines. <laughs> I'm trying to even really press hopefully you guys can see but here we go I'm just gonna press even more and here is the eye the other eye okay and of course that bottom area here under the eye very very important okay so somehow somehow this needs to be shorter the distance between this eye maybe maybe this needs to be higher okay so i'm just talking to myself always comparing things right now some more hair here that's going to be the light area and the ear very important it comes at the top of the eyebrows always see if we draw a uh, horizontal if we put our pencil like that it's going to be the top of the eyebrow and there will be a highlight, very interesting highlight always. And a bunch of anatomy going on. And the bottom of the nose is where it ends. And he has an earring. Go figure. Okay, so here. Here's a little bit, so we don't have to show. So the neck is very important. Whoops. Oh, I must have grabbed some of my paint. <laughs> That's so funny. Anyway. So we're continuing, we're continuing, Whoa, it's even better. <laughs> so here we go. So there is the um, very important, when we draw clothing on people, they do follow the body shape. There's anatomy underneath. So it's very important to follow that. Don't make it too stiff. 
So there is always folds that go behind that neck. So pay attention to this and okay here. Okay, just very roughly. We'll see how that goes. So this is the shirt. Hopefully you guys can see. Alright, and I'm just following again. That follows the body shape. Alright, so now we're just checking everything, making sure everything is okay. He has these distinct cheekbones here. The hair should be maybe slightly even higher, but that, that's very interesting shape of the of his forehead and these eyebrows have also a shape like that so we want to make sure that, that when i look at uh, morgan Fre freeman i always think of him as a president he always play, plays either god or president <laughs> it's so funny isn't it so he has that voice coming from beyond okay so anyway so i'm just now erasing Erasing all these helping lines that I had. And we'll be ready to paint. Okay, I'm just checking. Checking everything's correct. There is these nostrils. So the nostrils will be here. Pointy. It's not too wide. All right, so here's the lines. Hopefully it's close enough. All right, so we're going there. Again, I just want to make sure my corners are correct. Sometimes eyes can be oh, a little bit off. We don't want that. All right, so we're ready to paint. And I'm going to quickly erase some of my helping lines. And we're going to have a nice, very expressive painting. Well, it seems quite cropped in my video, guys, so I apologize, but all right, hopefully that works. We'll see. All right, so as always, let's get going. I'm just getting my paper towel, and we're going to start, we're like wetting everything, and we'll start from the background. I will wet, put a lot of water everywhere. Not a lot, like when I say a lot, just don't dump the whole bucket. Just cover it, and we're going to start from the background, and we're going to start going in. And the background is dark, so when we analyze it, see how the background is really dark. His clothings are dark. The only way, when you squint your eyes, we check our values. The only light area is here. That's what I see. Some of the hair, there is a highlight here. And the whole face is it kind of has this medium value. So we're gonna mix a dark tone and we're gonna do all the prima very, very dark for the background. Probably go some of the clothing, leave some highlights, some white around where you see the light, and then we'll go into the face. But for now, let me just wipe this. It's behind. I just grabbed a bunch of paint from my palette. That is fun. All right, so let's go water this whole thing, mostly the background. So I'm just putting a bunch of water, some water on the background. Uh, can go into the hair too. And we're gonna wet it. A lot of fun, just move your brush, the bigger brush, get your big flat or a big bigger brush that you have. And I'm going to mix whatever color you have in terms of dark. So I have something called neutral, interesting color called, I was running out of um, basically of indigo. So I found this very cool tone called neutral tint. And it does create darks, like it's right here. Hopefully you can see it. I'm just making a big puddle, but you can mix indigo blue you can just mix any anything cooler not so bright and more neutral but on the dark side so here i even have some blue in it so let's see what happens and if it's too blue i add a bit of brown like there is a burnt sienna on my plate here on my palette 
so there we go and very quickly just try to have fun i know the background looks very boring and not boring i shouldn't say boring but kind of smooth we're gonna make it more fun so let me just get somewhere and just move move it in some direction and because it's wet on wet it's gonna be nice and soft and make sure it's really dark so we want to get this whole dark right away so i ran away i ran out of this neutral tint i need some more of it this is how quickly it goes and obviously maybe darker see how immediately popped in a lot of dark and we are going down here and stopping somewhere where the clothing is it doesn't have to be completely exact not no cutouts with scissors we are continuing the same thing on the other side and it could be even darker i'm just moving it in every in kind of a fun way i'm gonna dab a little bit of blue just to make it more fun and And now, now that we have this all dark, we can actually lift some and do some swipes. And everything obviously is very wet. See how it goes into, my, into the hair slowly. Uh, you can just lift a little bit with your paper towel where this highlight is gonna be. See how it le leaves a bit of a texture right away. And it's okay, it just goes into the hair in the other areas. And here you can maybe do a little swipe, something fun. Maybe on this one too. Just some crazy effect somewhere here and there. You can do clean water spatter like we do sometimes. See, ta 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 ta. We just while it's all wet and it's going to give some sort of cool texture and while we have this see how it's already dark i'm going to continue i'm going to continue with in, down to his clothing so i'm just wetting it right now obviously my water is getting a bit messy so i'm just putting some water and you can you know lift sometimes your paper a little bit of dripping you can see my paper is so flimsy <laughs> but it's okay it's working i don't mind it it's actually doing a, an okay job so i'm gonna continue with the clothing and don't forget to leave some light like white around that shoulder that's very important that it's that light and here these edges we can kill them i'm just killing some of these edges right away so I'm going to mix same color that I use for the background. Maybe a touch of blue to kind of, you have this gray feel and very quickly paint only the areas and don't paint over where the light is. So right where this whole thing is. Could be sketchy too. I'm just adding this grayer tone. And it's okay to, you know, to have some white here and there. So, yeah, this tint, maybe it's meant to be mixed with other colors because it really goes very fast. So sometimes to get myself a nice dark color, I mix dark blue with any browns and it gets you a nice dark tone. And the other side is a little bit darker. So... And you can also add a bit of red so it's not doesn't get too green see i'm just getting into this green i don't want it to be green and here it gets a bit darker and it's all wet on wet still everything is wet my background is still wet everything is quite wet everywhere and we will now mix just it's nice to have all your big values right away uh, right big map mapping everything 
quickly. Remember, we're not concerned about details in the beginning, just the big, big shapes right away. So here I'm going to mix, I'm going to get some black. Like here I have ivory black and I just pop this right here. And I'm going to mix this ivory black with some blue because I really want his shirt to be very dark. So in this case, I'm going to get not so much water. I'm making a puddle, but not too much water. Make sure it's very thick, it's like thicker and maybe some red just to warm it up a little bit and very quickly i'm gonna add this very dark tone it's almost dry brush see this whole dry brush technique and and don't worry things are outside of the line if your paint goes outside of the line as long as you kind of keep the basic shape correct you're gonna be on the right track and here we go some more black with red ivory black is kind of transparent so i like it it's it's not killing or graying anything it's it's pretty good so almost like dry brush see when i do horizontal swipes it leaves this dry brush texture and maybe we, we will probably go a second layer, but I wanted to get this right away, a la prima, like really right away, basically. And so see how we have our big dark shapes already here. And I'm going to soften this edge right here because I don't want too many soft edges. I mean, too many hard edges and maybe soften some right there right away and I know we will be adding color now for the face so let's quickly I mean there are many many ways to start this painting and we could have easily gone with the same color of the background we could have gone into the hair right away but we'll wait and we'll probably mix similar colors so now we're going to mix our main skin tone and the main skin tone, which is will be the medium value, no, not the shadows. We're just mixing now the medium value. We're going to mix. I know everybody has a different palette, but okay, first, let's just wet it first. So I'm going to get some clean water, big brush, and my water is kind of blue. It's okay so I'm just putting some water and just wetting it so it's gonna blend easier every everywhere right away and leave white where the highlight is if you can just leave white and here we go so now I'm gonna mix one big skin skin color let's get some burnt sienna i'm gonna get some burnt sienna i'm gonna put here this area burnt sienna i'm gonna get some yellow and i have a nice uh, this is like a deep yellow almost almost very warm and maybe i'll get a dash of red and orange you know kind of a nice mix I don't know if you can see what I'm mixing here, but that is pretty much the color. And I'm going to just add maybe more red. So as long as you get some nice, consistent, cool, like medium, reddish brown tone, it's going to be the right tone. And this deep yellow also is good. Not too bright. If it's too bright, it's gonna turn orange. So we don't want it to make it orange. So here we go. And again, leave the light white, but we're going to paint everywhere with this color. And it looks a bit on the yellow side, so I'm just gonna put a little bit more red in it. And I'm just going into the hair a little bit and everywhere, I just swipe it. I'm going to continue with this. So a little bit more, yeah, red. 
Alizarin Crimson. Alizarin Crimson was probably a better red. Okay, so here we go. And I'm just continuing with my mixes. But leave a little white on that highlight of the nose. And we're just going to continue with that skin tone everywhere. Okay, let's let's add some of this. Alizarin Crimson is a cool red. It's kind of a, a, almost like pinkish purplish. So when you mix it with brown, it gives you this complexion of a dark, darker skinned person. So I'm just adding this darker, darker tone everywhere and I'm going to leave just paint all over eyes and everything just leave the white on the left where the highlight is and here on top of the nose I put so much water that I'm losing that white but that's okay and we're gonna lift it see I can always lift because it's still there it's still wet and we will continue with this challenge all right and here i'm just gonna get the same color now a little bit of white at the bottom of the beard if you notice so squint your eye and i'm just gonna leave a little bit of white everywhere else i'm just painting the whole thing and i'm getting the lizard crimson instead of that red that i uh, did in the beginning so here lizard with some deep yellow and there is the beard and we're just painting everything i just paint everything and then i move to the ear also with the same color maybe more red let's put a little bit more red and don't forget to leave that highlight on the very top there is a bit of a highlight and also a bit of a highlight right in it too so there are a few highlights just leave those and if you lost some of the white you can always you know lift it a little bit so i'll continue towards the neck uh here with the beard you can just soften that edge we will add different chunk for the beard a little bit later but for now alizarin alizarin burn sienna alizarin and burn sienna and i'm going to add this darker slightly darker than his normal skin color here And if things get a little too much, we just lift here for the beard. I just want to make sure it's slightly wider here. And again, soften some edges immediately while you have it. I'm going to soften some edges here towards the hair. I don't want to have sharp edges. And here we will lift. So this is going to be a highlighted area. So now everything is still wet, right? let's lift clean your brush wipe it and let's lift right here on the cheekbone right away so we're just gonna immediately pull this out that whole area maybe a little bit more as we go in let's lift now slightly here we, we're just basically bringing out some light lighter tone here on the face so we're gonna lift a little bit just one it's a one plane somewhere here that's just one plane so i'm gonna slightly lift some more and i'm gonna lift right here where the cheekbone is so this is just a subtle subtle little we're starting to model that face like making it uh introducing some lighter basically some lighter values by lifting so here I'm just going to lift a bit more. Okay, and there is some more right here, just a little bit. And definitely that bottom lip, we can lift that one. 
and see how we're basically taking light from the darker pigment it's a different approach than the usual usually a watercolor artists start light and they keep building and building and going layer after layer we just started with darker to medium to dark value and now we're just lifting it so there is this uh, mustache so i'm just going to lift some and we will introduce some cooler tones for that and while everything is too wet speaking of cooler tones let me just lift this over here where this eyebrow is probably i drew it not quite there and it should have been maybe some here on this eye nostril a little bit of nostril definitely cheekbones so and again there is a little bit of light here now while everything is too wet while well, everything is still wet, I'm gonna mix kind of a cooler, see how hair, his hair and beard is, a, they're a bit gray. So I'm gonna take a bit of whatever dark I use for the background, this darker, cooler tone, even that has a touch of blue, so it is kind of gray. And immediately I'm just gonna pop it here on his mustache right away. And if you use masking tape, that's fine. It, I'm sure it's probably dry by now, so no worries. But we're going to just introduce a bit of gray here. And don't worry that you don't see any details yet. You will. You, we will add those. So I'm going to move the... Just, we're just adding now mapping. Like It's all about squinting of your eyes and seeing just the big picture right now. So a little bit of gray again and we're not even painting that shadow yet we will get to it i'm just adding a little bit of this gray chunk because it's cooler it's not so warm red and it continues under his lip so even if it's maybe a bit of blue, whatever blue you decide to use, it could be ultramarine, like a little touch of ultramarine. It's, it's quite cool. Like you can put a touch of that and it's going to continue. And this is again, just mapping. We're not going into any, any detail yet. And while we have that cool tone, let's uh, introduce it into the hair. So I'm taking some ultramarine, again, same color as the background, so we're keeping a limited power. And we're gonna pop a little bit right here. I know his hair, his hair is consisting of a lot of individual hairs, but we're not gonna paint these, only some, only some. And squint your eyes and see this as a shape. So we're going to squint our eyes, and all I'm seeing is there is a plane there is a plane here and it has this medium value and there's light around it so so obviously his hair i'm just cropping his head <laughs> i just crop his head because it didn't fit somehow i didn't calculate it i always tend to make heads big gigantic so but i like that it's more dramatic so it's more interesting it just basically takes a lot of the page Okay, so everybody's doing good, right? Okay, so unfortunately, my recording, I have to move this because my recording seems cropped. Okay, so here I'm just adding this dark. That's the same color as the background. And I'm just adding it and making sure that the this uh, edge is not sharp. So we'll get to it. And I'm seeing this all as a plane. And now I'm immediately going to soften these edges because we don't want cutouts. And here I'm going to definitely soften this edge. Because when you squint your eye, there's almost hardly, you can hardly, hardly see the transition between the skin and the hair. And this transition here is probably softer too, so I'm just gonna slightly soften it. All right, all right. 
so we're doing good and if you lose some of the white it's okay as I said you can always just pop a little bit of white at the end in some certain highlights so we'll get to it so now all of a sudden everything dries very almost gray on my painting so it's not dark as dark as I I wanted it to be so it's okay we, we can always go a second layer so um, now let's mix a shadow color for this skin tone and the shadow color will be alizarin crimson and not too much water like now heavy pigment some blue as I said we're gonna get into the purples so let's get some blue okay so not too purple like if you wanna and then introduce some again burnt sienna so it's not super purple but it's like this warm purple towards brown and now we're going to paint these dark areas so here there's dark uh, part of the hair going into his forehead then it's going down and here there is a lot of shadow so we follow this cheekbone going down and yeah if everything is still is already drying that's okay that's perfectly okay here I'm gonna continue there he has distinct cheekbones so we will paint this with the shadow color and also there is a shadow right here under the nose definitely and it's going around this continues down under this beard under the beard is gonna get this shadow color purplish color all right and now if we want to soften some of these areas we should we have to definitely soften them here where the light is hitting the light that's okay but it shouldn't be too hard of a edge so i'm just putting some cleaner water and kind of running it to soften it a little bit and this is going to extend this shadow color now as we always said under the eyebrows it's always a bit darker in african-american faces they don't go those eyes don't go too deep so it's not quite dark it's almost seeing as if they're on the same plane uh, but it's still there is a little bit of a degree of dark going so this way we can maybe use that same color to emphasize the eyebrow going up the eyebrows are also not very distinct they kind of blend with the skin so we can dab dab a little bit so it's not too dark and we'll continue it gets darker towards the nose so here we have this plane going in a little bit but generally yeah it should be dark as a general rule but not as dark as in a caucasian let's say i mean and also that applies to an asian face it, it, they all have different specifics but pretty all pretty similar so slightly darker here maybe a little bit darker and we're gonna darken immediately right under this eye here he has these bags bags under the eyes that are specific that's part of his character and there's one more over here yeah that are quite deep so when you look at this whole shape just squint your eye make sure you you have that shape correctly so it's like the, going up down and a smaller towards going down and again always you know lift if you see some element just lift a little bit so you don't have to as you go you don't have to think later to lift it somehow so here 
we're going to add some more I'm going to add there is a plane here so this plane between the eyes should be slightly darker so I'm just gonna slightly add a little bit of dark I mean it's not as dark as those shadows but I just add this a little darker value and my dark needs to be closer the eyes need to be a little bit closer set here so I'm going to just gonna move this dark right there okay and things are probably wet and quite fluid then you can just move it in any direction you want here we have that cheekbone that goes like that okay this is where the dark is it's right here so all right and we're getting we're getting there we're getting there so now we're just it's just a matter of getting uh again taking this color that we mix for the shadow and mix it with the gen main skin tone i just want to make sure nobody's waiting So everything is going fine. So now with this, we're going to start. See, we, I'm not even getting into the eyes yet, which are very, very specific. I'm just going to add a little bit of dark. So whatever I see here, there is a bit of dark here. Uh, obviously, you can indicate here some of his this wrinkle with just a darker slightly darker not too dark don't go as if it's the actual shadow so when you squint your eyes not really that dark so a little indication of a wrinkle here there's another one but it's just start stop start stop don't don't go endless lines because those lines are just not quite visible you see them but not they're not really engraved into the face too much so we have to be careful with that so we're just adding some more tones here especially that nostril it's quite specific here we want to add some dark a little bit of dark a little bit of dark in here i'm just building some of his features and now we're going to get into the more uh, detailed features like okay so we start with this line here in the mouth make sure it's in the light, right location and it is very dark it's quite dark so and it has a shape so it has a little bit of a shape and it goes up it goes up and it has these darker corners if you notice so this mouth needs to extend a little bit okay not too close okay and again the mouth the upper lip is always a little darker than the lower lip it should not be as dark as this line but i just took out some of the shadow color and i'm painting this upper lip here making it a bit darker and there is a big line right under basically a shadow area right under that lower lip so it has also shape Pay attention to the shape it goes like that so so we haven't gotten to beards or any details so now let's move to the eye to the eyes and I'm gonna mix a darker color again, alizarin crimson, burnt sienna, and some blue. And make sure it's really dark, whatever you mix, because we're gonna going to paint these crevices here and the folds and the actual iris in the eye. So we do need kind of a darker color here, alizarin blue and burnt sienna. So this top crevice 
and things may still be wet if you guys feeling that your painting is very wet I would air dry it with a hair dryer hair dry not air dry <laughs> anyway so here is this eye and it goes down and it's very dark looking so then here we go remember that corner of the eye and then there is an edge and using the same color I'm just gonna pop in that that iris here that you don't see see how it's very specific his eyes almost half he has different eyes something is up but this one is you don't see the whole thing or it usually three quarters so it's very almost hidden the top part is hidden so we're doing this it goes down and don't worry about the bottom edge we'll get there and using the same color I'm quickly I'm going to move here on this side and do the same thing there is a crevice for the upper lip uh, upper eye uh, eyelid and it goes down then there's the bottom that edge here and again same color I'm just gonna use for the whole eye right so and now since everything is still wet obviously there's some light in those eyes so i kind of lift a little bit we haven't gotten into the pupils yet so i just lift a little bit and that's going to give the the expression the aliveness moisture and whatever's happening with inside the eye and pay attention to this uh values again there's a lot of dark going on over here obviously so i'm just dropping it a little more and we'll wait a bit for it to dry so here also some dark so i want to soften some of these crevices like these lines i'm going to run a little bit of water on them so they soften they're not too outlined and we are going to there's a, the upper eyelid casts a shadow believe it or not on the actual eye so I'm gonna run a little bit of dark just like that a little bit of dark so there's no sh super sharp edge so there's a bit of a dark being cast onto that eye and now I'm gonna pop in some red in those corners see they're even actually red in the reference so we always put a little bit of red on those corners obviously there's lots of blood vessels and things going on so I'm just popping this red popping it here too not too much water don't want things to fly out too much and maybe just pop in some red here and with the red of course i always add some to the nose it makes it more alive with all these blood vessels on it so a little bit of red maybe on mine doesn't look like a little bit <laughs> but it's it's good to have red on the nose and the ears here should have some red and since we have it here I'm just gonna put some red on those ears because there is a light there is light coming from behind definitely is lighting up the ear and maybe a little bit on this side and again no harsh edges nothing should be too hard And little by little we're just building out his face now I'm paying attention I'm looking at all these features hopefully they're all correct that's why it's important to look at your, the portrait you're painting 
it has to be parallel to your face like in the same plane as your eyes because if you look at it at an angle then we end up skewing everything and twisting it so that's why I stand up usually when I paint and I, I have a better view of the whole thing and if you lost some of these crevices out oh, here I'm just adding some more of this dark because I lost it so I'm just gonna add a little bit and everything is still wet so it kind of goes everywhere and here is this eyebrow you can emphasize it a little bit goes up all right and uh, there's a lot of darkness here under this cheekbone I think it's interesting so we can really really paint this a bit darker just add a bit more darkness emphasize it it shouldn't be again too too harsh of a line here so i always soften my edges i remember there are nice dark edges but a lot of them should be soft so especially in a human face so again uh let's check these nostrils the, it's very dark under the nose so i'm just gonna go under those and make it make sure it's it's very dark i'm i'm mixing burnt sienna alizarin crimson and some blue believe it or not so it, that's gonna make you a nice dark tone and we will pop it right under here under that nose and if it dries lighter i'll go back again because that those areas here needs to be dark definitely around that nostril that should be rounder so you can fix things around I'm just adding a bit more dark right there and now we are basically going to perfect everything and make sure things are correct things are correct and nothing is outside of the ordinary so just again i'm looking just going here there everywhere basically paying a lot everything you see there's some darkness here in the ear there's some dark area there's anatomy going on there's more dark over here coming out going in like that those cheekbones are very important so we're looking at those and of course these these bags under his eyes um i lost them a little bit so i'm going to add them again so with slightly lighter color so always tone rather values always think in terms of values don't even worry too much about the color even if you use two colors in the whole painting and make it all monochromatic that's fine you need to be more concerned with the values so basically darker a little darker value but not as dark as everything else i'm just adding um, adding this tone and we will add more character to the eye we're just waiting for for them to dry a little bit and these eyelids actually are should be dark they're kind of dark some always always checking your values and going in and now we can go into show maybe some of this interesting wrinkle So see how it's important not to leave, you know, the white, the white of the eye white because it's never really white, white. It's almost gray. But if the face is in a shadow like it is or in the, it's, a, it, it's not being blasted by light, that white, uh, we don't paint it. Like we always paint it with the same color as everything else it may be cool it off you can always cool it off with a little bit of blue in it but 
I usually leave it as is because that gives this whole palette everywhere. So I'm just lifting here because I see some of his cheekbone actually is coming in here and just popping in his face you can do whatever you want because it's an older face it has you know all these little things happening so you don't have to be careful just like painting a young face so in this case you can go again and again and again and have little blotches of paint almost coming in so I'm just going around and looking at different details so just adding maybe slightly dark because that is a plane right here that should be a plane obviously so it's slightly darker on the nose side of the nose we're going to soften it again and if you lost some of the eyebrows like I did uh, now is the time to kind of add a little bit it's a shape it's not hair. don't worry about her hairs it's just a shape here maybe some blue because they're all gray and we do this So the eyebrows are not close together. And again, I'm just really dabbing on these edges. I don't want it to be very distinct because that immediately is going to turn into a different person. If I make these eyebrows really, really dark, that's not going to look like him at all. His eyebrows are very light. So let's now look. There is some sort of something going on here on his forehead there's a bit of a darker plane and we can introduce this here this can be going even darker and just pay attention you know to your little areas and just different planes again compare values jab jab now how we do this hair see i'm just seeing it as a shape that's how it should be done uh, now for the different hairs we can always go back and maybe do some with white a little bit but now when I squint my eyes I see that here a little bit of dark pay attention to these slightly darker areas so a little bit of dark and you know you can indicate a little bit a couple of hairs with your brush little dabs and that's going to give an indication of that texture if you want eventually you can really go very much hyper realistic with a tiny brush but generally that's later that's after we've determined all of that and that's pretty specific here this area keep that light above this upper lip and if we lost we always go back if we lost that line in the middle of the mouth i go back i make sure it's darker because that does give character to the face and whatever expression of the face we have it emphasizes it We're gonna go down here and it's gonna go up. Okay, fingers, I use fingers to do a little texture. Here, there, everywhere, and it's gonna go up here. And obviously there's again, yeah, if, if you lose something, you just go back, have some hair going on. Yeah, that's a lot going on in that face, really. It's not as simple as the one before. So here, make sure that, you know, you can paint negative shape. It, it's not going to be a straight line. There's hairs, obviously, so I'm just painting kind of uh, around, like dabbing, dabbing to show some dark
Okay, and now next, now next we're checking our values. Mine looks like Jimi Hendrix. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you. Would look. Maybe I made his face too narrow. <laughs> I don't know what I did, but <laughs> it's okay. So now let's paint the pupil. So we're getting really dark color. I'm getting ivory black. And we're going to paint inside that eye and make it a little bit more distinct. We, I'm taking a smaller brush so things don't fly out. And I'm going to make make it really dark. That pupil should be super dark inside the eye. And it goes in here. Um, I know what I did. I think I made his eyes a little bit too big. It's okay. All right, so this is just a lesson, but it's still here. We're putting a darker pupil. And I know there is a highlight. We're going to pop that highlight in there. I don't even see that pupil a little, but you just have to put it in there. It does liven the eye. I'm just going to use it here. Livens, yeah, okay, so here again, I'm emphasizing a little bit some of these crevices if I was them. And here, but don't go into too much outlining because then it's going to look very artificial, everything. I'm just adding some of this dark here that I lost before. Yes, his eyes are pretty distinct and they are dark. So here we go. We won't tell anyone who we painted. <laughs> if somebody recognizes him, good. If they don't, that's okay. <laughs> anyway, so we're going here. The second time I painted Obama. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Could... What is that? See, is he will think it's his brother. <laughs> As long as they could make the connection, that's good. Yes, I know. <laughs> I know. Uh, well, when we paint portraits, we really do need to pay attention to our drawing, that the drawing is correct. We want to have likeness, obviously, and it needs to look like the person. But in if you just decide just to paint a portrait and you want to show it to people how you paint portraits, you don't have to tell them you know who that is. It's, it's okay. It's all about how you approach it. All right, so I know what's happening here. I just need to f make this a little bit straighter. Anyway, yeah, it, it is. It's great painting older faces with lots of interesting things that are happening. And now I'm gonna get into. While well, things are kind of drying in that face, I wish I could lift this. There is an edge at the bottom. Uh, uh, the bottom eyelid there is this little edge here so I usually lift it depending on the not every paper allows it so you can just lift some of this lighter edge right there and I'm just lifting some of these little there is a bit of a highlight here in that corner there's a little that edge definitely should be highlighted I'll come back with a little white and I just dab some white in it. So uh, we are in a good shape and we will get all the itty bitty details with the hair. But for now, I'm just looking at this clothing here. I need it is missing something. It just looks just too flat. So I'm going to add a couple of lines, almost like dry brush in a dry brush type of way. So I'm gonna mix again blue, maybe with some ivory black. 
I believe black has a little tone to it. I, I said that, yeah, it's kind of, I like it. Okay, so there is a bit of a line, and again, dry brush, just to add some movement here, and in, in a suggestion of clothing. Okay, and... I know there were lines there, but don't worry, and you can always sort of sketch it out. Just make sure that it's a little darker here, right before it becomes highlighted. So you can always darken that area a little bit. Mine was looking a bit, a little bit too white. So I just wanted to darken it. And here, without looking green. Maybe I need my bigger brush, right? And just one, two swiping moves, movements. Jab, jab. The direction. Usually we just follow the direction or the opposite. We go the opposite of the actual main direction. So definitely it needs to be darker. And on this side, I will darken it too. And you can have fun strokes brush strokes it doesn't have to brush strokes don't have they don't have to be smooth they don't have to be perfect you can have spatter like take paint and just go pom pom like spatter everywhere that's what creates a really interesting painting so there are no rules against that just we artists we make the rules really as long as it looks good at the end it looks nice convincing fun and yeah and people it has a little bit of a wow factor that's all we care about right now so some burnt sienna how do i take a darker color blue burnt sienna and blue and a little bit of red so it doesn't get green here and i'm just darkening this side of his jacket on that side Okay, that probably should have gone up a bit. It's okay. All right, and obviously the side is again darker, shouldn't be overwhelmingly white. And if you want to really darken his shirt even more, just go ahead and make it super dark. It doesn't have to be very, very light. You need to have some really dark area. If it's black, yeah. Make it black. I'm gonna just introduce even more dark right here. And again, sketchy. Let's do this a bit of a sketchy. Da -da -da. Bold, bold strokes. Bold strokes. Where am I? I know I'm just moving this. A little bit of bold strokes comes out. Oh, I put too much shirt, that's okay. All right, here it's going right there. All right, and so whatever this uh, beard, see if you look at the beard here, it's not as light as the hair over there. So it shouldn't be quite white. I usually, you can always add some Light, lighter tone of ultramarine right here that's gonna that is like white in shadow with this little ultramarine so I'm just adding a bit of here some beard all right and now should we add some of these earrings why not so now what we can do with the hair and the eyes too, we can add some white, guys. We can just add some white for the highlights. And again, I'm going to take the tube and pop some highlights, especially in that left eye. There is a very distinct highlight there, so that, that's going to make it alive. Everything is already drying in the eyes, almost. Not quite, so I'm going to pop this highlight right there. Kind of on the upper part. 
yeah you can pop smaller maybe on the other side although we don't see it but it's okay if you do it and if you lost some of the highlights so there is a very distinct highlight i'm just gonna put a little dot right here that is a very distinct highlight that i, I lost originally so if you want definitely on top of that ear there is a bit of a highlight and i just pop a little bit of white so now with the hair what do we do with the hair you can take a rigor brush tiny itty bitty rigor brush and if you didn't mask it so Addy, i know you probably masked it now you can eventually when it's all dry you can erase it then you're gonna see you can just add a couple of hairs not all hairs you can just give some indication and the hairs are make them sketchy not too distinct hair is not very you can't see just squint your eye and whatever pops whatever pops into your field of vision that's what you paint and that's how we see the big picture that we will be probably some but we're not going too crazy with that and obviously mine is outside of the page the rest don't worry about the hair on the in the shadow i wouldn't worry maybe now the beard because his type of beard is specific so maybe we can just do a couple of hairs one two three five like a little bit something just to to make them distinct so and i usually use my finger to just dab it so it's not so obvious and maybe a bit of chap chap so not really really lots of lines but when you look closely yeah these hairs are so specific and of course it's a very nice photo high resolution but if we want to get into the photorealism yes you can always super uh, add some more realism to this but i'm just teaching you how to start and obviously we don't want to overwork it because there's always, always a possibility if we get too much with the hair and go crazy so it's a thin line yeah it is a balance really between how much um, detail do we introduce i always go for pick an area and go for it but definitely have some areas that are quiet so it keeps the balance okay i'm just adding a little bit more and that does give his character gives some character this mustache hairy stuff that's happening here so maybe maybe a little bit and i'm just gonna go in definitely here under his lip couple of but again it shouldn't be too obvious shouldn't be too intentional should be more sketchy sort of now you see it now you don't type of thing a little dabs here a little dabs there that's the whole approach to hair and beard and see you put two hairs here two lines over there and immediately it gives we already know the viewer already the viewer knows that that's what's going on so you're giving them a chance to process And just a little dabs here a little there again maybe that little highlight on top of his nose just a little dot and again we don't overdo the weight just a little bit just a little highlights less is more less is more we keep repeating that less is more we have to know and remember it but again it should not look unfinished so now I'm looking at his forehead. I haven't done much to it, so maybe it needs some definition here, especially with the connection. But again, we'll leave it softer. It should not be a cutout. We're leaving it softer, a little bit softer. 
add some more color there. And you can add, you know, with the lines, with your darker tone, some texture. I can indicate some texture of something happening, but again, let's not overdo it. I always like put it and then I take part of it out. Guys, don't hesitate to ask questions. I know I go into this never ending monologue, but if your anything is this um, question mark for you, let me know and I'll be happy to answer. And I'll be happy to see what you're doing right now. Work in progress. I know it's work in progress. Okay, so I see Janine. Okay, very nice. Look at that. Very, very nice. All right. Everybody's doing great. It's hard, isn't it? Yes. Good job. Okay, so Janine, first with you. Maybe longer. Something is off with his, like, his his forehead is maybe a little bit wider than it should have yeah yeah a little bit it should be narrower see how it's yeah. very narrow but you did a fantastic job with the skin tones with the as long as it looks human i think i'm happy <laughs> it looks very human it looks great i love the hair i love background i love the whole skin just some of his features a little bit you know narrower forehead but looks right. awesome to me right. That's what it means yes let's see amy good job very very nice you're very brave i see your bold colors i like the darker background so things are popping out uh it's sulu i know you were showing me something okay look at that that looks great see you said you never painted african-american and you did it it looks just like that yeah yeah a black person absolutely yeah. and the hair you did a good job with the hair looks very nice if you can soften this edge the transition between the hair uh -huh. so it doesn't and look I, like a I, wig I was the highlight here. yeah <laughs> yes 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 yeah. awesome uh wonderful looking good i love the colors the colors Do I to put any darker shades in my pictures uh, Amy, let me see. Okay, a little bit farther so I can see the bottom part. Yeah, darker shapes. I, I love what you've done. Uh, the skin is looking good. The face looks good. Maybe darker clothing. You can just darken okay. this whole bottom part with the clothes. Thank you. Adi, you were showing some. Oh, wow. Look at that. Nice job, Adi. Yes, and it does look like him. Yeah, good job. Yeah, I like how you can't get it big though um maybe you need to click on it or pin it looks really good looks very oh, very good you nice. did a great job very nice soften out soften see how you have on the right here this part here just darken it you don't want any highlights there i also would darken the right side of the hair because it looks like ta-da like a little halo if you squint your eyes, only the left side is light. Oh, yeah, I see it. Yeah. So just let's darken this and let's darken a little bit of the side, but it looks fabulous. Did a really good job. You, yeah. Awesome. And we have Carolyn, if you want to show something, or if you don't, up to you. <laughs> Look at that. Love it. mixing the paint it's okay no you did a fabulous job i love it and you can always go back and you know darken that hair on one side the same thing you guys doing unbelievable it's it's really good unfortunately my video now is a little bit cropped so you will see uh the top of the video will be a little cropped and the bottom and i apologize because i have to set up my camera a little bit higher so it can get the whole this whole vertical format but oh let's not forget his very distinct features are all these blemishes that he has so at this point we can just pop in some even a spatter we have 10 more minutes and as usual you can stay later if you want but at this point i would like to you know add these that what makes him him yeah my face was looking younger ah <laughs> uh, i know like all these patterns and little blemishes that is super 
super distinct feature of the face. So always pay attention. So the moment we, we do these little blotches, that's going to look definitely like him. You know, he has tons of those, including on his oh, eyes. Yeah, sure. Very, very specific. I know it's little, but the moment you pop them, that immediately like, oh, yeah, now we know who that is. Yeah. So these are little blemishes and Mila? yeah. When you lose the highlight, I can I can paint uh, I don't know these white paintings acrylic or what? Uh, just because if I <laughs> no, you didn't lose any highlight. You it all looks really good. I like uh, you highlight you really lighten it up uh, the exact uh, oh you're talking about this highlight yeah, here yeah, yeah just take a little white I'll take a little white from the tube but don't mix it with anything don't mix it with color we don't mix the white with any color because then it goes into a different universe and just pop in a little you highlight mean in water, water color you have uh, white paintings too or... Yes, in the tube. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Just take. Yeah, okay. there is a tube in the watercolor, and if you use the tubes, that I that's what I do. I just dip into the tube, and just dry brush a little white here, a little white there. If I lost some highlight, but don't mix okay. it. Don't make any colors with white. Like it has nothing to do with. Yeah. Okay. We, yeah. <laughs> so perfect. So just continue. Yeah. Whatever you guys doing, you're doing great. Really cool. I'm just putting all these blotches on his face and I don't want to spatter because it may look a little bit too like spatter, but I don't know, couple of, one, two, so it lands randomly instead of me trying to make it look random. Oh, it's nice. Chilling. Yeah, there we go. And of course, uh, all these hairs here, whatever, it looks too harsh. You can always, you know, make it with a dark paint, create some sort of hairy texture. So, can you use the Picasso pen or no? Can you use the pens? Uh, no, I haven't used any pens. Can I'm always going with... Idea? Is it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Whatever, oh. whatever helps, whatever helps. It's going to be good, specifically with, you know, lines. Um, you can go, like, I'm looking at mine right now, how it looks a little bit lighter on the background. I would probably leave it like that, but I wish originally my background was a bit darker. So there was a higher contrast between him and this highlight there. But generally, yeah, you can have a second layer and just add some dark it's not it's okay to paint thick with watercolor it's it's absolutely okay it looks fun anyway so anyone else any questions isolo is there she's mm -hmm. everybody's doing good everybody's doing good it's mm -hmm. not an easy subject when you started with me it was big mess <laughs> ah i know now I, I see it's yeah <laughs> there is a rhyme and reason i know always i always scare my students i no matter what kind of class <laughs> you afraid to be to no me. afraid no fear no fear no fear just big brush and go whoop and re <laughs> and then start lifting start li <laughs> I know. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, important also. Wonderful. Oh, sweet. Yeah, so just a little... Your, your, your picture is yeah. even much better than photo. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the goal. We don't want to really make it look like a photo. And here, of course, you, see, I'm popping some white where I see highlight. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So this is going to make it look a little bit more moist, moist and you can do uh, some what is it called the masking fluid you can and obviously here in the corners if you're very meticulous if you'd like to do it that's great actually you won't have to worry about it now see i'm just adding a little white but yeah just to i'm struggling with this masking fluid it's very hard to put the same same line yeah i don't know how you I don't use it much. Just use a small brush. Make sure you wash your brush because it's like glue. Basically using glue. Yes. You know what it uh, tip is for masking fluid? 
put a little soap on your brush. Oh. A little soap, and then uh -huh. it washes off real easy. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. Very good to know. Look at that. Nice. Nice. You did a good, very nice. Beautiful. Excellent. Beautiful. You did a great job with the beard, with the hair, with the skin tone. And it doesn't matter, you know, the complexion, darker skin just has a little bit more pigment and you can introduce some color like purplish some green greens even but uh, yeah with a lighter complexion just a little bit diluted with more water that's pretty much it but i use pretty much the same colors really that i uh -huh. use for a lighter <laughs> and of course some some faces are more pink some are more on the yellow side some are more have little tints also depends on where you are in your environment like if you're surrounded by we talk about this by if you have a red hat like last time there will be a reflection so so this is all good you guys doing really really good any preferences for the next session in terms of what type of uh, reference you want to paint from yeah. all good. Up to you. <laughs> okay next one will be a woman again then so we're gonna do woman men woman <laughs> <laughs> so i'll pick some uh some interesting face yeah no worries it's gonna be interesting it won't be a young it will be probably something more distinct with stuff but you guys doing really really well don't forget those blemishes i'm like really thinking that is a very distinct feature of him oh specific thing i keep forgetting see how under this the mouth the bottom lip there is a plane there is a plane it it's a distinct plane that is very specific to his face mm -hmm. see it's very interesting it kind of gives this little smile almost helping to, to that whole smile on his face so things like this and we just add them a little bit building and obviously it's a little bit darker because it's another plane and we keep going so I'm just gonna darken it yeah there is almost like almost a line There is a line here. And again, always be aware. Um, values, values, values. Always compare your values. Look at the value and compare it to the nearby value. Squint your eyes all the time. Very, very important. directions shapes compare size versus this versus that in relations to others and what gives this face the character that it is so you can always you know i'm gonna lift a little bit so this is distinct feature this kind of a thicker area right under his eyebrows so you can always you know lift a bit and no fear again and the more lively the more brush strokes the more fun brush strokes the the better your face is gonna look because we're not really trying to make a photo to make it look like a photo we're creating nice expressive painting but uh very very good just accentuate anything that's specific to this face here I'm just gonna accentuate this and this mouth yeah it is it's interesting yeah especially actors have this interesting faces they have a lot of character not just actors anybody <laughs> what am I saying actors actors because we know them we've seen them so much but yeah they know how to maybe have a bit of uh, something more to their face but everybody and anybody has something 
interesting so in their face like some of these crevices hmm? what did you say Janine yeah I said your your um, perch is amazing oh yeah. Yeah. the more you touch it the better and better better yeah, yeah because we are looking at all these little specific areas so maybe like i want to see it from a bird's eye <laughs> maybe the hair should have been more but it's okay so see how so i i noticed um starting artists they try to squeeze everything in and to the detriment of the actual proportion so I started big. I thought I was going to fit it in and it hoo 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 and it's expanded. So no worries about that. We can crop heads, half heads, doesn't matter as long as your drawing is correct. And mine is so so there's some little discrepancies to it. But... Questions guys, please ask me questions, questions. I have to go, so I'll see you next week. See you next week, Janine. Good to see you. You're doing Thank awesome. You. Thank All you right. so much. Thank, Thank you. So much. Thank bye you. Bye-bye. You guys, free. Uh, you're free to go if you'd like. Anybody free to stay. An older person, how to create texture. It's basically put little blotches of paint. Even now that we have it, how to create texture. Just a little bit more subtle not too dark but just subtle areas that you can add to nice. and we're gonna go here some more and again lips may be a little bit redder i hardly put any red but yeah you can dab a bit of tone to it obviously there are some blood vessels so i'm just adding some light color i don't want it to be too dark so here on the bottom lip i can just add and we go slowly but true Portraits are um, not easy, but pay attention to your proportions. Measure, measure, measure in your head and compare it to everything else. That is very important. The drawing is half the battle. If you drew it correctly, everything else is going to come to a nice conclusion. So pay attention and everybody has something very specific so you can focus on that like some people have this specific mouth and that's that part of the character so we just pick and choose and yeah this Tanson pad is not bad after all he's doing an okay job now if i start lifting too much it's gonna probably not be a good idea but for now it's doing fine Uh, send me other portraits that you guys have if you need any comments or critiques on them Thank you. Yeah, definitely And there's some rules there on I mean general rules in terms of color like the forehead 
could be uh, is not as red as let's say the middle part of the face so there are certain rules but again it all depends on how the face is in the light position in the light so follow the rules but not follow the rules so here i'm gonna add a little bit of maybe a little dark right here and the good part about painting an older face is it's so forgiving to have a second layer and a third layer and you can always just go again and again and i'm going to emphasize that shape of that forehead so i'm getting a little bit of this alizarin is it alizarin maybe not i don't know what i have on my palette but it looks like alizarin so it's a little bit here, I'll emphasize this part. And you see how we paint wrinkles. I know a lot of people are very, a lot of artists are very confused about how do we paint wrinkles. Just a suggestion, just a suggestion, a little bit of a line. Start, stop. Don't just outline it as if it's, you know, painted or drawn with a sharpie <laughs> yeah and it is a fold basically the wrinkle when you look at it closely it's a little bit of a it has a fold and a little bit of a highlight above it so if you want to go ultra hyper realistic you can always lift a little bit of light above it so right next to the dark there is a bit of light but just do it only here and there again that's a suggestion only this did you do that on the side of the nose also yeah the dark yeah again it's a suggestion i don't know can you the dash dot like the dash dot yeah it's not really like an endless line so it starts so oh it's very subtle again so maybe just a little bit darker here on the top softer as it continues a little bit darker and again it tells you really when you look at it but you don't have to even follow it completely here i just want to emphasize this mustache right so just finishing touches towards the end making sure we kind of pick pick things that are specific but yeah definitely here also so some some areas are softer some are harder over here i'm gonna emphasize now that you said it good job jenny <laughs> you just noticed that maybe you saw that something was missing here this is good there is a little bit of a emphasis on these nostrils but but again we don't want to overdo it's a it's a thin line it's a balance between when to start when to stop smaller little dots here and we do, we want to make sure that they're not organized nothing is organized including our blemish blemishes they're just kind of sporadic now we see them now we don't and <laughs> <I like that. laughs> now we see them now if we don't see them it's better <laughs> but yeah sometimes we see them so yeah and you can go really really realistic like every single little thing and just pick an area again my suggestion is just to pick an area so it doesn't end up looking like a photo but i always start being very big like big 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 areas first and map it so next time be prepared we're gonna Start mapping again. Hey. All right. So everybody's free to go. Have fun. Enjoy your day and keep painting. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Oh, wow. See you. See you. Uh, see you next week. See you next week. See you next week. Very <laughs> nice, Amy. Thank you, Addy. You're, you're going to send us the videos, right? Yes, so two videos. I owe you the first yeah. time and now this one. Thank you. <laughs> Adi keeps me, she keeps me honest. <laughs> I you promise. I promise you have it. You have it. You have it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. You did a great Bye. job.
Have a good one. Keep painting. Finish those. Don't don't forget to finish them. And send me pictures. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> homework. Homework. Nice. Yes. Yes. Have fun. And questions. If you guys have any questions, no worries. Just I'll be happy to answer. Not right away sometimes, but I, I try. I try. I'm available. I'm going to add some more hairs here around. See how in front of his ear there's lots of crazy hair sticking out so that is a specific area I'm just gonna end edit a little more you can do little dots dots too for curly hair and it does give a bit of a sense of texture I love how you did the top of his head at the hairline. Uh-huh, how it's all softer. Oh, yeah. How it just has got that nice highlight up there. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. Thank so you. At, at mine, I've got a, a bad line kind of going, you know, from, I was trying to bring some of the hair down onto his head. Mm-hmm. Because I didn't leave enough of the light color on the top. Yeah. So I thought, well, maybe I could try to loosen some of that because I really like that looser look and that's what I'm, I'm trying to do it and I feel like so still niched and wanting it to look like the picture like the picture I know we get very much so into the our reference sometimes we forget that we need to just follow the principles and Carolyn what I do is I always squint my eyes when I find myself being completely lost into the photo I immediately every now and then like every five minutes just squint make sure that your your values are right and when you see that you basically see just big blobs of paint and take the big brush and exercise on your own just do some sketches just ta 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 almost geometric like almost geometric approach to get out of this trying to follow exactly the photo and it's going to loosen you up, almost see it as an abstract. Try to paint like a few abstract faces, kind of in a geometric way, and you'll see. That's the, the same approach, really, to this. Yeah. It's fabulous. <laughs> it just is fabulous. Thank you. You're so sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Edges. Watercolor. Everything about watercolor is edges. I have too many hard ones. Right. So you said, uh, well, your it looks great. Your painting looks great. Just soften, soften this transition that you had above, like with the transition. Hair is never very sharp transition. It's always soft to the skin. And I need more darks. Yeah, and that's gonna pop things out. I mean, some finishing touches are gonna a huge difference between so-so painting and a great painting. Yeah. yeah, so Amy, you're showing me very good. That face looks really good. You did a great, great job. Let me see it from the other monitor. Really good skin color, the, the hair. What I did yeah. with the hair? Yeah, that's... Uh, no, it looks good. It doesn't look too sharp. Oh, the top of the hair. I see what you're doing. Just take... So, Carolyn, I'll take the same color as the background. First, wet the, wet the hair, maybe more on the right side. Wet it. Okay and take this color from the background and introduce it into that hair it's like almost uh, okay. part of it yeah I'll, so just for, that. that will help just wet the wet the whole hair and just go poom, poom. so here should i should i try to lighten up um at the hairline the I'm hairline sure. you can um you can soften it a little bit i would just put some water and kind of lift some areas with paper towel yeah, you can just lift no, so the no. transition is, is not so... But you can put some water and just lift with paper towel. Even swipe a little bit, like tap, tap, tap to kind of 
soften it. Okay, thank you. No problem. Yeah, it looks good. Looks good. Don't hesitate to also darken the clothing, guys, if you want. That's yes, going to pop the rest of the painting, too. Yes, 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 I saw that. It looks great. It looks really good. You did a great job, I mean, yeah. Good, yeah. Did you, um, maybe you need to add some highlight, maybe in the hair, I didn't see much, but you can maybe um, kind of lighten up the left area of the hair, that whole highlight there. All right, guys, so I'm gonna close that meeting and if you'd like you can send me your finished work show me what you got and next time it's going to be even better we'll we'll pick some fun reference i'm learning all right good it's all good all right see you next time <laughs> i can't hear you amy i can't hear a single thing Oh, I can't hear anything. Is it my computer or is it yours? Let me see. I can't hear anything. Let me see. Is it my computer? No. Oh. Sorry. Ah, oh, I can't hear now. Maybe it was my computer. I'm so sorry. Oh. I'll take a picture going down. <laughs> Oh, I couldn't hear a single thing. I didn't hear a, a single thing what you said. I take so many classes, but like, you know, you need to learn the techniques, not just to drive. So yeah. Learning that from you, so. Oh, that's wonderful. And when you guys see the video, you can pause it. You can see how, you know, the brush strokes. I'm just laying it. Not too much worry, not too much, just be bold and free. Again, measured craziness, kind of measured boldness not too crazy so you get you get that sense eventually with practice you'll get that sense sounds good to me <laughs> <laughs> all right good to see you carolyn amy okay. i'm gonna close this all righty all righty i'll see you next time next tuesday and i always start i always log in at 10 30 so you're free to log in also with me next time but i usually log in 10 30 to make sure that my picture and sound everything looks good okay awesome all right bye 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 see you later